My name is Stephanie Penta. My poster is being presented using data from an ongoing study at St. Joseph's Healthcare Hamilton in collaboration with the Peter Boris Center for Addictions Research and McMaster University. Today, we will be looking at the influence of problematic cannabis use in various facets of emotion dysregulation on the acuity of borderline personality disorder. Emotion regulation is defined as an individual's ability to effectively manage and respond to emotional experiences and is vital for success in everyday functioning. Conversely, emotion dysregulation, or ED, refers to an inability to control and regulate one's affective state. Moreover, ED is a complex construct and is thought to be composed of several facets. These include non-acceptance of emotional responses, difficulty engaging in goal-directed behavior, impulse control difficulties, limited access to emotion regulation strategies, and lack of emotional clarity. ED is prevalent in individuals with borderline personality disorder, or BPD, a severe mental illness characterized by pervasive instability in mood, self-image, and behavior, as well as in people who use cannabis regularly. A recent study reported that 45% of outpatients with BPD engaged in past month cannabis use. As such, while there appears to be a link between ED, BPD, and cannabis use, it remains unclear whether problematic cannabis use, referred to as cannabis misuse for the remainder of this presentation, interacts with ED to contribute directly to the acuity of BPD. To that end, the current study examined the interactive influence of cannabis misuse in various facets of ED on BPD acuity. Participants included 80 outpatients in the Borderline Personality Disorder Service at St. Joseph's Healthcare Hamilton. All participants had a diagnosis of BPD and were between the ages of 16 and 67 years inclusive with a mean age of 33.95 and a standard deviation of 11.81 years. 75% of the participants were female, 18% were male, and 8% were transgender and or gender diverse. Data collection occurred at the outset of these participants' treatment in the form of several validated self-report questionnaires, which included measures of BPD symptoms, cannabis misuse, and six facets of ED. To test whether cannabis misuse moderates the relation between ED and BPD symptoms, a hierarchical multiple regression was conducted. The interaction between cannabis misuse and two separate facets of ED, namely non-acceptance of emotional responses and limited access to emotion regulation strategies, accounted for a significant proportion of variance in BPD symptoms. This result suggests that indeed cannabis misuse moderates the relation between the aforementioned facets of ED and BPD acuity. Upon further examination of the interaction plots, two separate exacerbating effects become evident such that as cannabis use and the emotion dysregulation facets increase, BPD acuity increases as well. At highly limited access to emotion regulation strategies and high non-acceptance of emotional responses, BPD acuity was the highest for high cannabis misuse. When these ED facets were low and cannabis misuse was high, there were the lowest levels of BPD acuity. Results of this study indicate that cannabis misuse interacts with select facets of ED to exacerbate the acuity of BPD symptoms. It remains the case that many BPD treatments focus heavily on improving ED. However, the current evidence suggests that such BPD treatments should incorporate strategies for reducing cannabis use when indicated in order to increase treatment efficacy and improve outcomes. As such, the inclusion of harm reduction techniques, as outlined in Canada's Lower Risk Cannabis Use Guidelines, may be of benefit to BPD treatment programs seeking to encourage reductions in cannabis use. Regarding limitations in future directions, we did not explicitly measure the frequency at which cannabis was used or the amount of cannabis and its psychoactive chemicals consumed. Future studies should include such a measure to determine if correlations exist based on the amount of cannabis consumed. Additionally, the study used cross-sectional correlational analyses, thus rendering causality impossible to determine. Future studies should introduce a temporal component in order to draw concrete conclusions about causality. Last, since this analysis was exploratory, no hypotheses were made ahead of time, thus increasing the risk for type 1 errors. Future studies should focus solely on the variables mentioned here. We wish to acknowledge the Community Psychiatry Clinic and Peter Boris Center for Addictions Research at St. Joseph's Healthcare Hamilton for supporting this research. We also wish to sincerely thank the students and research assistants who were involved with the data collection for this project. This presentation would not have been possible without their diligence and hard work. Thank you very much.